So I've actually gotten more than one email of people asking to see a video regarding just the EFI terminology. So I figure I'd just go through that really quick in this one. I figure the easiest way to do this is just gonna be go to our, basically our channels list here and we'll go through each one. So starting at the top, we have RTC, which is I think runtime counter. Basically like once the car starts, it starts a timer. Hopefully you know what RPM is if you're watching this video. And what I think a lot of people maybe don't understand about RT RPM is it's referring to crankshaft revolutions. INJPW is injector pulse width. Regardless of all of the different tables and modifiers and, and everything that's going on, the injector pulse width is basically like the end result of what's happening at the fuel injector. Injector duty cycle is below that. It's basically how much injector pulse width you have in relationship to how much time you have available for you know for the engine cycle. General rule of thumb is you don't want to go above about 80%. You can maybe go a little bit higher, but you don't want to make a habit out of it. CL comp is closed loop compensation. I use this one pretty heavily. Basically is doing the math for you. And you calculate in Especially if you have the learn turned off, this becomes really easy. So it's basically gonna take your actual air fuel ratio, divide it by your target air fuel ratio, and at that point you're gonna have an error between the two. The closed loop compensation is that error amount. So if you have a 3% closed loop compensation, then you know you need to add 3% of fuel to your fuel table. The next two are basically uh, self-explanatory with what I just said. Uh, we have our target air fuel ratio, which uh, there's actually a table for it right here, as you can see. And then AFR is the actual air fuel ratio. Uh, that's what the sensor is seeing and reporting. We have air temperature enrichment. If you go into temperature enrich here, you'll see that there's both air temperature enrichment and coolant temperature enrichment. And then there's a coolant, temp current coolant air fuel ratio offset. So at colder coolant temperatures, uh, you'll find that you'll change your actual desired air fuel ratio. After start enrichment, that's what we have here next. Uh, that's basically how much fuel is added after the engine fires. It's programmable here under temperature enrichment as well. And then there's a programmable amount of time, how long that will stay active. Current learn, I very rarely use the learn. I only use learn if I'm in a situation where I don't have much of a choice. I made a video on a boat. I used it a little bit there because the, everything was, I, it was moving around too much. I couldn't kind of do it manually. Closed loop status, this is letting you know if the closed loop function is actually working or not. This is. Same thing, but for the learn, I'll let you know if the learn is functioning or not. So then we have fuel economy. I've never actually used this. So I actually just pulled up a data log trying to see what kind of output it was showing and it said disabled. So somewhere in here, I'm assuming that you can turn this on or off. Uh, I've never had a need to use it, so I've never played with it. So I guess I'll have to get back to you on that one. Fuel flow, uh, this is going to give you pounds per hour of fuel flow. MAPROC, that's the map rate of change. That's typically used for rapid throttle openings where your map sensor value is gonna change really quickly. It assigns a numerical value to that and that's what that is. Below that is TPS rate of change, exactly the same thing, but for throttle position. Situationally, I'll actually turn off the map rate of change and only use TPS rate of change. Most ECUs only use TPS rate of change. So do what you want with the map. It doesn't hurt anything as long as it's not causing any problems, but I prefer to do it through TPS. Tuning change, I've never paid attention to this one either. Estimated VE, so let's say your volumetric efficiency table says 60% and you have a 5% correction. So now your estimated VE would be 65%. So it just takes a little bit of the math out of it for you main rev, rev limit, this is gonna activate when your overall max RPM rev limiter is active. Rev limiter number one is going to be your two-step rev limiter. This is usually hooked up to a trans brake or a button or a switch. On some clutch cars, you can be on a clutch switch, or sometimes you can do it off of vehicle speed. So when the car is at zero miles an hour, rev limit one can be active, and then once you start moving, uh, rev limit number one to turn off. Launch retard, this is generally a timer that activates after rev limit one turns off. So like, let's say a few tenths, I don't know, maybe for a half a second, you wanna pull 10 degrees out of it for traction purposes. Uh, that's what you would use that for. Ignition timing, this is the ignition timing value after all of compensation. So this is what's actually happening at the spark plug. Knock retard, that's how much ignition timing is being pulled out. Knock level is the actual level of knock in which case you would use the knock level to determine how much retard you want based off of that knock level. I don't know what this is. IAC position is just your idle air control position, usually either in steps or in duty cycle. Uh, I hate these. 
these guys. Target idle speed is just that. It, it's the, the RPM that you want the thing to idle at. It's based off of coolant temperature. The colder temperatures, you have a higher idle. As it warms up, you'll come back down to a more reasonable speed. Map is your manifold air pressure. This is gonna read in KPA. TPS is throttle position sensor. Uh, that's gonna read in percentage. Uh, zero to 100% range. MAT is your manifold air temperature, uh, so your intake air temperature sensor. CTS is your coolant temperature sensor. Barrow is your barometric pressure sensor. Battery is obviously your battery voltage. Electricity. Good idea to keep an eye on this, especially in relationship to like engine RPM. A lot of times you'll see the alternators just aren't keeping up uh, with RPM, so you might have 13 volts at idle, 14 volts cruising, and then you might drop down to 10 volts at 7,000 RPM. Fuel pressure and fuel, fuel pressure are both self-explanatory. Um, they will need to be configured, and in most cases, you will need aftermarket sensors for those to work. Pedal position, this is usually for drive-by wire cars. Fan one and two, you know, the default is there's, there's two fan options that you can turn each one of those on and off at different air temperatures. I think I skipped AC kick here. Um, this is usually to bump the idle up a little bit when you have the air conditioning on uh, to prevent the car from stalling. Fuel pump number two, again self-explanatory if you're running stage fuel pumps. These are usually either come on with uh, throttle position or manifold pressure. I'm not sure what AC shutdown is. Maybe that's where you turn the air conditioning off above you know, 50% throttle or whatever you configure it to. TCC lockups, your torque converter lockup. Sensor warning, sensor caution. That's probably where you go into the scaling or the sensor setup rather. You can set warnings up for different sensors. Base fuel pounds per hour and base fuel VE. These are gonna be just what the table value is. So if you wanted to just compare what the actual table value is compared to, you know, what, it wants to be or compared to your modifiers to see you know if if it's the same so if your base fuel is 30 pounds an hour but then your actual fuel flow is 35 pounds per hour then obviously you have a five pound per hour difference so then you can start going through all your modifier tables and see where that five pounds is coming from base timing is basically the same thing it's just the the timing value in the actual table so if your base timing and your ignition timing are different, then you have a modifier going on. You'll see this happen a lot at idle. If you have the spark idle uh, crap enabled to where the, the computer is actually modifying ignition timing to try and maintain stable idle. Same thing with base target air, air fuel. If there's a modifier going on, the actual target air fuel ratio will be different than the base air fuel ratio. Base ignition dwell is what the ignition dwell is before any battery voltage compensation is taken into account. The battery voltage compensation is not adjustable. It just happens kind of in the background. So you don't have control over that, but uh, the base ignition dwell, and then you have the voltage comp ignition dwell. On most 14 volt, 12 volt, 14 volt systems, these numbers would be very similar, not exactly the same. On a 16 volt system, you will see that uh, the base ignition dwell is usually a lot higher than the voltage comp ignition dwell. Injector end angle is for your end of injection table. You can have that either set to a fixed value or you can populate an entire table for that. ECU log trigger, I guess that's if you're using a toggle switch to activate logging. Timing versus air temp, timing versus coolant temperature. Uh, these are modifier tables for respectively the air temperature or the coolant temperature. I don't remember what these statuses are. You know, I can't really remember too much of this shit. Um, those are usually on and off for separate things. Uh, and then you have all of your injector drivers. And then we come down here, we have our individual cylinder fuel corrections. So if you pulled some fuel out of cylinder number five, you'd be able to see it there. And then we have our individual cylinder timing correction. I have not done any direct injection cars with Holly, but I'm assuming that's what this is. Boost PSIG is nice, so if you don't want to look at your manifold pressure and KPA, uh, you can use Boost PSIG and it will display it uh, both in vacuum and positive manifold pressure and PSI. Uh, and output is usually for your bump box type stuff for auto transmission stuff. System pad 234, I don't know what that is, I've never used that. Boost gear, if you're using gear based uh, boost control, that's what that would be. 
Boost is going to read, it's gonna be similar to this Boost PSIG, but if I don't ever use this, I use this one. I'm pretty sure that the Boost without the PSIG is just gonna show you positive boost pressure. It's not gonna read vacuum. Boost time is usually activated at the release of the trans brake or whatever you're using to start your boost control. And you can use the boost time for other things. Uh, so again, it's like release of the button, timer starts type deal. Same thing, which we'll probably get there in a second, is gonna be your nitrous timer works the same way. Target boost for the closed loop CO2 based boost control, that's gonna be what your target is. Trans brake, when the trans brake is active, when you have the button pushed down. Boost scramble plus is if you have another button or some guys will tie in a bump button to work as scramble boost above a certain RPM or vehicle speed. Boost scramble negative if you wanted to push a button to lower the boost. By the time you're in the situation to want to lower the boost, it's usually too late, especially if the car makes any kind of power. Manual boost reset. I've never used this, but there's different methods of reactivating uh, the boost control timers and stuff uh, based off of pedaling the car and things of that nature. So it probably has something to do with that. Boost control duty, or boost solenoid duty rather. So basically you're gonna have a fill solenoid, a vent solenoid. They're gonna work independently of each other. And then there's the boost solenoid duty, boost safety. So if you activated, you say at 12 pounds of boost, you want an ignition cut or revert to wastegate or whatever it is, that'll kind of give you an indicator that that's happening. Uh, that can be nice troubleshooting if you're like, why the car just goes so much slower? And then you, you realize that it dumped all the CO2 out because you over boosted. Boost master enable. So if you have your boost control on a master enable switch, same as a, a master enable switch for nitrous, so nitrous stage one, uh, that would be when the nitrous stage is active, uh, GPO one. GPO is generally a general purpose output in most other ECUs. Uh, considering this is tied in here with the nitrous stuff, this most likely means that while the nitrous is active, maybe you're activating um, another output based off of the nitrous being active. Nitrous enable, that's usually like your master enable switch. And nitrous input number one, that's usually, so you have the, enable switch enabled, and then input number one would be, say, throttle percentage. So once you get over 70% throttle, it will activate that as the, the second input to actually activate the stage, which would be here. Um, I'm going through these really quick and kind of just off the top of my head, so it's strong possibility. I might not be 100% accurate on all of these. There's clearly a handful of things here that I don't use. Nitrous lean cutoff. So in the nitrous parameters, you can set maximum air fuel ratio, both lean and rich. So if you exceed the lean side of things, it'll cut off. Same here with nitrous rich cutoff. If you go below, you know, if you program it to 10-0 air fuel, it goes below that, it'll shut the nitrous off. RPM cutoff, so if your rev limiter is at 7,000, you're probably gonna wanna set this at 6,800 or whatever. Uh, you don't wanna be on the nitrous and hit the rev limiter at the same time. Nitrous map cutoff is going to be uh, probably boost related. I have not done any holly cars with force induction and nitrous at the same time, uh, but be careful if you're running 30 pounds of boost and then you hit it with a hundred shot, the boost is most likely going to go up at the same time. Uh, so the boost map cutoff can be a nice way to save yourself. The dry fuel number one, so the number one is for the stage and um, then the dry fuel. So this would be how much fuel in pounds per hour you're gonna add when the nitrous is active. Uh, and this is how much timing you're gonna remove uh, when the nitrous stage is active. Uh, there's tables for both of these. Uh, so you can either set it up as a fixed value or you can fill out a table. Nitrous timer number one is just like the boost timer. So once you let go of the trans brake button typically, um, or maybe go full throttle and activate the stage, uh, then that timer is gonna start. So then you can do you know progressive control based off of that. Pad one through fours, I've never used those. Uh, gear, pretty self-explanatory. Um, if it's an automatic transmission, like a 4L80 that has sensors in it, and speed sensors, you can, uh, you can get gear pretty easy. If it's like a Turbo 400, uh, then you'd have to calculate gear drop, uh, which usually works pretty well full throttle, but doesn't work all that great just cruising around. Speed is uh, just that, speed in mile per hour line pressure, input shaft speed, accumulator pressure. These are all uh, automatic transmission things. Range position, so if you have a range position sensor, it'll let you know what gear it's in based off of where you have the actual lever, whichever type you have. Trans pad two, don't know what that is. Uh, throttle body, TPS number one and number two. These are usually 
for drive-by wire throttle bodies. Uh, most of the drive-by wire stuff will have redundant sensors in case there's a failure. So this is the pedal position. I'm sorry, this is the throttle body position, these two. And then this is the actual pedal position. Uh, so that is programmable. Just because you're 70% pedal does not mean that you're 70% throttle. Um, so you can set that up, that relationship up however you would like. Brake pedal, if you have uh, an input wired to your brake pedal, it can read that. Um, again, I don't know what these pad things are. Uh, the diagnostic stuff, um, I have used these situationally. I do not know what the diagnostic codes are off the top of my head. Um, that uh, information is available if you search for it. Uh, usually you're gonna find yourself looking at these diagnostic things when you have uh, cam and crank sensor problems. Uh, auto trans, launch input, manual reset, I've never used these. AT gear, so you see some of these things seem to be a little bit redundant. Flex fuel multiplier, flex fuel spark, so this one would be fuel multiplier, figure 30% fuel for ethanol roughly, and then your flex fuel spark, so that can range like crazy depending on how your base fuel table is. But if you want to add 2, 4, 10, 100 degrees of timing off of flex fuel, please don't add 100 degrees of timing. That's what that would be. Flame builder. I want to smash my computer after seeing that. Fuel boost build. So this is going to be additional fuel you're adding uh, while on the two-step. EM trim pot. I don't know what this file is. So if you're using a multi-position switch, um, this is going to give you basically the the trim position there. Based off of this being right next to each other, uh, this trim pot's probably offsetting the boost. Once you start getting over into this area, you can actually start naming the things that you want them to be. Uh, they're usually additional like inputs and outputs as like these flex, all these flex things are. And there's some front wheel speed going on. Uh, dome sensor, this is usually the pressure sensor you'd use in the top port of the wastegate for a CO2 based boost control. These are different inputs. Using some sort of a fan, probably some PWM controlled fan. Wastegate open loop would be my guess on this one. And some different outputs. Custom configured safeties. So we'd have to dig through the file to see exactly what they're doing with that. Boost launch, scramble, and I lag. So this video is a perfect opportunity. If you see any of these things that I breezed over real quick and you want to know more about it, let me know. You could basically make an individual video off of every single one of these. All right, this one was short and to the point. So again, if you have any questions about any of these, different uh, parameters or whatever the hell you want to call them just uh, let me know in the comments and as always i appreciate you watching and i'll see you on the next video